What is going on guys? Cheeto here and today I'm going to be showing you guys the new DLC in Assassin's Creed Origins. It's called The Discovery Tour. So I know what you're saying, Cheeto. What is The Discovery Tour? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it is if you follow me. So here we go. So basically this DLC is basically discovering Egypt. There are a lot of uh, Egyptian historians and they basically tell you everything you need to know about Egypt. So so let's go to the menu and I'll show you what this is what we're gonna be doing. As you can see right here, this is the character selection screen. You could play as the hero Bayek, you can play as the wife Aya, you can play as Julius Caesar. Not to mention Cleopatra. Which which is which is kinda cool. You can play all these characters. Heck, you can even play as Kimu, the son of Bayek. And there's also a lot of characters you could play as the actor. You could play as a Roman soldier. I'm thinking about playing as a soldier one day. And you can also, for some reason, you can actually have Bayek in different outfits. Dang, that's, that's actually pretty cool. But what sucks about it is that you can't use the beard or change his hair. Okay, so the next thing is the uh, the passport and this is basically it's basically your to-do list like for example like for example I did I did two already and, uh, and it goes by stations it's it basically the whole discovery tours that you learn about Egypt and uh, what happened during that time like for example like the pyramids we're gonna learn about the pyramids um, the things the countries all around Egypt, the daily life in Egypt, like workers are transported, and also the Romans have their own section as well, which is pretty freaking awesome because I want to know what the Romans were like. You know, what were the Romans like? You know, were they good? Were they bad? Were they were they just terrible soldiers? I don't know. Now this right here is my favorite. It's the timeline. Now I think for the era that we are in, we are in the. I'm probably gonna butcher it. The Ptolemaic era. Now this is this is pretty cool because I like things that have years and dates. So we're around this area right now. So BCE means before the Common Era, which is which is pretty neat. Like you got the Great Pyramid, Tutankhamun, Ramses II, Alexander the Great, and Cleopatra. That is so awesome. Now, now this is the map is it's just like the uh, like the whole map of the area and the best part is you can actually fast travel to these areas it's pretty neat so so here's what we're gonna do and these are also the the tours they all go in order here the major exports of Cyrene, the temples of Zeus and Cyrene, like all this right here is at your disposal. Whatever you want to do, just click on it and you are there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna do Bayek here. And uh let me see. We're gonna try to do you know just for fun, do the first mummy. So follow me and let's enjoy this tour. Alright, and here we are. So one thing that I will mention is to make sure you turn the volume up because we are going to be learning something today. So here we go. Osiris the first mummy. There, it's, there are six stations and estimated time is four minutes. So if you got time to, for four minutes, you might actually enjoy this tour. So we're going to be understanding the significance of the mummies for ancient Egyptians. And where are we at? We're in the hometown of Bayek, Siwa. Here we go. Let's learn something today. To Osiris, the first mummy. Oh, cool. We're going to learn about the mummies. This is pretty freaking awesome. All right, here we go. The oldest mummies recovered date from the Old Kingdom. Though Egyptologists believe that mummification was in use much earlier than that. 
At first, the body was mummified through environmental desiccation by leveraging the dryness of the environment and the heat of the climate. Early experimentations in mummification were conducted with the use of resin made from tree sap. Strips of linen were only used on some superficial parts of the epidermis of the hands or jaw. Huh. That's amazing. Okay, so let's keep going. So far, I learned a little bit. Ideologically, the will to preserve the body is not explained in any way until 3600 BCE. Wow. This is when the Egyptian belief that the body housed the soul was finally documented for modern Egyptologists to eventually decipher. It was not until the arrival of the myth of Osiris in the Egyptian religion around the 5th dynasty that mummification was thoroughly conceptualized. The practice was thereafter grounded in both a mythological and ideological point of view. That is amazing. Man, I love this artwork. Might, might need to use a, a background for my uh, for my title screen. Alright, here we go. Background screen. Okay, here we go. Let's learn more. Osiris was mainly known as the god of the dead and the god of resurrection. The most well-known Genesis myth concerning Osiris is that of his dismemberment. Huh. That's pretty neat. The Statues of Osiris. So it actually means death and resurrection. It is Plutarch who gives the most simplified and complete summary of the story. Within Egyptian mythology, Osiris represented the first king to rule Egypt. Jealous of his power, his brother Seth attempted to usurp his throne. After several unsuccessful attempts, Seth succeeded in killing his brother by dismembering him and scattering the pieces of his body all over Egypt. Iset, the great of magic, traveled all over Egypt in search of the pieces of her husband's body. After a long search, she recovered all the pieces save for his manhood, as it was eaten by a fish. Man, Seth, you you had to kill your brother out of jealousy. Why would you why would you do that? Seriously, why would you do that? You, you jealous bastard. Right. Okay, here we go. So, quick question. Have y'all learned something yet? I did. I learned that mummies, you know, Cyrus, and that guy named Seth that killed his freaking brother. That's weird, out of jealousy. Okay, here we go. Next station. Iset then reassembled the body of her husband by binding it together with strips of linen. Aided by her sister Nephthys, another powerful magician, they gave Osiris the breath of life. This not only brought him back from the dead, but also allowed him to recover his virility long enough to impregnate Iset, thus ensuring his succession before, once more, dying. Thus Horus was born. Horus was born! All right, here we go. Fast station. The ritual used to bring Osiris back to life essentially depicts how he became the first mummy. It is why, on the Sarcophagi of Kings, we often find Iset and Nephthys represented as the magicians who restore life to the deceased. Huh, now that is neat. That is pretty cool. Yes, tour completed. Now this is this is pretty cool because because you get to learn about Egypt during that time. Was it a good? Was it were they good times or bad times? I'm pretty sure they were, especially those damn Romans. So yeah, this is basically all you do. See, see, we already have one already marked already. So you guys do me a favor if if you ever get a chance. To do the discovery tour, do it. You might learn something. I learned a lot, especially Alexander the Great. He, like, I learned so much about him. It is unreal. Basically, he was the badass of that century. Okay, so. All right, guys. 
if you like this video, take your hidden blade and stab that like button. Also, share with a friend, especially this video, because this is the Discovery Tour. Just to let you know, this is the DLC, so make sure to download it. It's free, and learn, learn some facts. Learn some facts about Egypt, maybe about the pyramids. Heck, maybe even the Romans, if you like the Romans. Romans are pretty cool. <laughs> um... I'm gonna try to do more of these tours, so make sure to get your tickets now, and we'll definitely get into them. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. You guys take care, and y'all have a fantastic Cheeto-rific day.